Alrighty, so thanks to all of you that submitted your questions for this Q&A. Let's see how long it takes to get through these. And let's see if we have any fun or not. Remains to be determined. A BW Roses 98. We've been my dude on here for a long time. He goes back to the original days of the old Off the Rope show. Y'all should at least check him out. With his long, kind of drawn-out videos, you should indeed. Out of his loyalty to me and this channel and the channel before that. Did WWE make AJ Styles champion as some type of counter to Chris Jericho versus Kenny Omega at Wrestle Kingdom? Absolutely not. I don't think the WWE was thinking like that in this case, because from the sounds of it, they had to sign off on Jericho facing Omega at Wrestle Kingdom. Um, AJ being champion was about not having Brock versus Jinder at Survivor Series. It was about the ratings pop for SmackDown. It was about those types of things. That's what that was about, in my opinion. A Mounties Corner, another dude that you should watch, Chase in particular, you should probably check him out because he's a pretty big Orton fan too and he's got the life-size kind of creepy looking poster to prove it. Like Ring Boner just sitting right behind him as he's talking on camera. I just want you to think about that, Chase. But y'all should check out Mounties Corner as well. Would you have an NXT invasion angle happen during the Raw vs. SmackDown match at Survivor Series? No. And the very simple reason is is who do you really, truly, honestly have down in NXT that would be believable enough, big name enough, to really pull that off? And please don't say Adam Cole, baby. Please don't say them. Well, no. Just no, okay? That's all I'll say is no. I won't kill your dream, but I will crap on it and say no. No, 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 no. Dexter C73. Is Flair more popular than Hogan right now? Um, some of the stuff in recent years with the Colts a couple years back doing the claps and the Ric Flair and uh, obviously the health issues brought out a lot of positive sentiment for him than the 30 for 30 special. I think at this particular moment, um, yeah, he probably is, especially with some of the bad things Hogan said, naughty, naughty man. Um, Yes, I would think at this particular moment, perhaps, uh, when, when it doesn't matter as much, but uh, yeah, probably, probably. Uh, Victor Tran 562, are you still planning on going to WrestleMania next year? The simple answer to that is yes. I think the tickets for like general public go on sale like Sunday or something. I do plan on buying them, even if they're going to be nosebleed seats. I don't care. It'll be about getting down there. It'll be about the experience. It'll be about going down to New Orleans, uh, being live at a WrestleMania, so I won't really care. My thought is at this moment that if I hurry up and buy the ticket, it will give me a few months to plan out the rest of it, how I'm going to travel down there, probably drive down there in the old grandpa hoopty caddy, and then probably crash with people, maybe have to get a hotel for a couple days, who knows. Uh, but if I buy the ticket... It'll be much more likely to force me to get off of my ass and actually go and do something with my life for a change. Honestly. So the plan is yes, the Schlag Daddy is going to WrestleMania 34. Plans can change. You never know what can happen from one day to the next. But that is the plan. So my hope is if any of y'all that are watching this are actually going to be at WrestleMania next year, I look forward to meeting you and hanging out. Rock and roll. Principal NYNB. Who's a bigger Mr. WrestleMania than Shawn Michaels? Hogan? Taker? Who? Well, you just named two of them. And if you want to, for argument's sake, put the name in there, you could throw Cena in there, too. Now, this is kind of one of these philosophical debates that we have. You know, Hogan was the guy that made WrestleMania go in its early stages. The Undertaker for so many years had never lost at WrestleMania, had many marquee matches. People will point to Shawn Michaels' performances and all of this crap, but so often WrestleMania wasn't built around him. I'm just saying. You know, in the in the grand scheme of things, how is he Mr. WrestleMania when people argue the hottest period in the company's history, the Attitude Era, he was largely gone. 
you know, after WrestleMania 14, he wasn't there for 15, 16, 17, 18. That's a four, four and a half year stretch where he wasn't there. That dude's not Mr. WrestleMania. I don't give a shit what anybody says. Hogan's Mr. WrestleMania, or especially Taker is Mr. WrestleMania, and I will always stand by that. It's about more than the damn match quality, period. The Real Pietro 35. What two matches uh, that never happened at WrestleMania would you have wanted to see from WWE? Uh, let's see here. We've got Hogan versus Flair at WrestleMania 8. Hogan versus Austin at WrestleMania 18. Hogan Warrior 2 at WrestleMania 7. HBK Savage at WrestleMania 10. Or Hogan and Brett at WrestleMania 9. Um... Hmm. Hogan Flair, obviously, WrestleMania 8. That was just a huge, massive miss, period. Uh, the second one, you can make the argument, from my standpoint, maybe Hogan Austin at 18 because we didn't get it at all. And, and it, it, it's tough because, going back through the scope of history, the match that Rock and Hogan had at 18, why would you want to gum up the works and potentially screw it up? Well, WWE did because, of course, they didn't main event the show. Because, oh yeah, Triple H, Chris Jericho, that's where the main event needs to be. Not every main event of a WrestleMania needs to be about the titles. Just saying. Uh, so probably Hogan Flair and Hogan Austin. Um, although HBK Savage at 10 would have been interesting. A Power Spy in 1. Worst year for WWE in the last 10 years. Is it this one? <sighs> From a business standpoint, no. And ultimately, that's probably the standpoint that matters the most. Now, it's about how do they get there and how sustainable is what they're doing to get there. Um, from a product standpoint, I thought 2010, especially as the year went along during Linda's first Senate run, I thought that was worse. Just me. Because they played it so safe, and it was so bad. And then what you had go on with the Nexus and how bad they screwed that up. And you could just see that crap being botched as the year went along. I think 2010 was a little worse, just for me. The second half of that year specifically. Uh, Carminade wins. Can you do a review while eating apple pie? Why do you ask me these weird questions? I suppose at some point in time, sure, what the hell, why not? If it makes you happy. Won't be anytime soon, though. But at some point in time, yes, I will review something or do a video while eating apple pie. Not humping apple pie, although that's probably going to be your next question. Anyways, MFA2. Matt MFA2. What will be the two world title matches at 34? We know one of them is going to be Reigns Lesnar. The other one... Is it Styles Nakamura? Is it Cena Styles? Is it Cena Mahal? I don't know. That's a good question. I'm not sure what that second one is. Uh, and WWE's most underrated and overrated year. Um. Hmm. I'm thinking. Underrated year. Ooh, I don't know. Maybe ninety four. Yeah, because a couple of the bigger pay big four pay per views that year I thought delivered pretty nicely. So I maybe say ninety four. Uh, overrated year. Probably one of the Attitude Era years, probably 2001, because that's when the invasion angle happened. So there's your answer on the overrated one. That's easy. Uh, Sam T, do you want the name TNA or GFW back? I just want them to have a name and stick with it at this point. It just it's it's so appropriate, and it's not even just a negative thing at this point. It's just obvious and it's cynical, yes, but this company can't even get their freaking name right. Like, I, I thought the moving on from the TNA name was a chance at a new path, a new direction, but then we're Impact, but then we're GFW, but then we're back to Impact. What the hell? Make up your mind. Like, 
from a from a, a growth standpoint, a product standpoint, a marketing standpoint, your brand identity is everything. And to this day, even though some people might not agree, the WWE has a significant issue 15 years later because they got the F out and a lot of people still refer to it as the WWF. That means that you didn't do a good enough job of getting your branding out there. You didn't get that new identity out there. So imagine trying to sell your fans on a product and they don't even know what the hell to call it. Of course this company would even screw up the name. A DJ Spoils Bag. What memories do you have of Nintendo and are you interested in getting the Switch? I will tell you I always had to play Nintendo at a friend's house uh, when I was young, young, young because it took me a long time to actually get one. Um, Dominating with Bo Jackson and Jackson and Tecmo Bowl, I remember that much. Uh, am I interested in the Switch? Nah. You know, I, I gotta tell you honestly, we work full time, and then like I come on here and do this and other stuff that I do and other obligations. There's just not a lot of time for video games. I would love to play video games at this at this point. It'd be a nice release, have a little bit of fun. It's just really hard to find time to do so. It's just the way it is. So not really that interested in it because I would just sit there and go to waste. Uh, hug life for life. Is Scott Steiner better on the mic than most of the WWE roster? Is this even a real question? What do you think? Of course it is. Because the great thing about Steiner is even when the promos are scripted, it doesn't matter because he would just go off there and fly off the cuff. Better than 98% of the current WWE roster minimum. Era of Reality, are you a fan of the War Games match returning for NXT tech TakeOver? Excuse me, fan of the War Games match returning? Yes. Fan of using it on a stupid NXT show as opposed to Survivor Series? No. But it, at least it'll be on the NXT TakeOver show, so that should be something different. But it should be a Survivor Series match. Just saying. Gator Nation 2. Is Reigns' character salvageable, or is, is he going to just be another Cena? It's salvageable, but he's just going to end up being another Cena. Hater Lord, did you ever take a break from wrestling just to refresh yourself? Well, honestly, over the past few years, there's been a couple times where I've taken a couple of months off. Probably will again in the future. Um, extended breaks? Um, 93... Well, that was year we went homeless and stuff. So, I mean, there was a whole bunch of factors. Um, so, there have been breaks, yes. And I'm sure there will be in the future as well. Joker Mash 961. Any funny stories from high school? Oh, God. Um, oh, God. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Team camping trip. Summer before my junior year. <laughs> so we go to this campground in Wisconsin and you know we're sitting there we're kind of being loud it's a group of like 12 of us plus the coach and you know, we're being obnoxious teenage shits whatever uh, so that night you know while we're sitting there and so mind you it's only like 9 30 10 o'clock so it's not that late and honestly we weren't being that loud we had been louder during the day, but at that point in time, maybe the people had been fed up. But there was a, there's this guy that comes up in his flashlight to talk to like a group of like 13 of us. <laughs> Talking about if we don't be quiet, he's going to have a bunch of angry men come meet us in the morning. <laughs> so, of course... <laughs> We teepeed his tent. And then the, the next day, as this was just the camping trip from hell, as you might call it, we went and played basketball up at the uh, court that it had. And the one dude we had was six foot ten. He dunked on the rim and bent it like way down. And the park got all pissed. Then we teepeed one of the guys' cars in our group. And then, of course, the campground got a complaint about that, to which my coach, Barker, a hero, an absolute hero to masculinity everywhere. You should know this name. Greg Barker is a saint in a non-saintly way. 
the campground gets pissed at us and threatens to kick us out. So Barker proceeds to pull the pencil out of his ear, and if you ever wondered again where I got it from, that was it. And right off this whole thing, how about the basketball hoop? Was it even regulation height? What is the guy that's 6'10 supposed to do? Maybe they should put the hoop together better. Maybe guys should stop harassing us in the dark like he's some type of creeper. And then he wrote in the note, Since when is it illegal to TV your own car? It's on our campsite. It has nothing to do with these other campers. Why are they worried about it? It doesn't matter. <laughs> to hear Barker sit there and read this letter, and when he sat there and said, Since when is it illegal to TP your own car? We just lost our shit. <laughs> I remember too, um, oh god, what was it, our... Was our junior year? Yeah, it was a junior year too. I think when we uh when we went to uh, his house after a banquet and we teepeed the shit out of his jeep. I mean, we teepeed the shit out of it. And then of course, about an hour after we teepeed it, it rained like hell. <laughs> so he had little spots of toilet paper on his freaking jeep, his jeep Grand Cherokee for like a week. <laughs> he was so pissed. <laughs> it was worse. <laughs> oh my god there's so many uh the time my senior year that i we had a practice and uh one of my teammates went in to get a drink of water at the forest reserve at the little thing and some lady chased him off and told him that he couldn't get water so i went in there and i called her scary lady gunner she was some big fat bitch and i challenged her to a to a brawl and stuff. I said, how are you going to deny the man water and a bunch of other obscenities? Of course, it didn't go over so well with the athletic director and so on and so forth, but you're not going to do that to one of my teammates. He's not making a noise. He's not doing anything. He just wants a drink of water. Uh, the time that we played basketball and I cussed like 22 times like they counted it. Like, you know, huge temper issue, huge profanity issue. Still to this day sometimes. Uh, so there's so many. There are so many. Some that maybe aren't so funny. Oh, I remember the time the uh, they had the speed bumps in the uh, in the student parking lot, like the road to and from the student parking lot. And uh, <laughs> one of my teammates and a couple of his friends one night sat out there with sledgehammers and just went tink, tink, tink for like six hours, and <laughs> the speed bumps were gone, never to return. <laughs> a lot of fun shit yeah and try to think of it that way so maybe i'll have some more stories prepared next time but those are just the first few that can kind of come to my mind and uh p1 curb stop asks closing this out well this is kind of a downer from the fun stuff uh thoughts on idea on the idea that people are too sensitive nowadays um to answer your question as is so often the case it's about context. Here's what I mean. Yes, people are too sensitive nowadays. Frankly, sometimes people need to nut up and shut up and stop being such whiny bitches. And before the idiots in the comments section will talk about like liberal snowflakes, just look at Twitter and see who the real snowflakes are sometimes. I'm just saying the boycott Keurig and all this other crap. Like when I have interactions on Twitter, if I disagree with somebody that's like a flaming liberal, they tend to not uh, get so pissed off that they block me. That's usually far right people that in the middle of a discussion, when I've got them in a corner, they will just run away and they will block me. Um, yes, people are too sensitive nowadays. And it's tough because it's like, you know, the world's an imperfect place. And sometimes, you know, people are going to get run over a little bit. And sometimes uh, things are not going to be perfect. And sometimes you can't please everybody. And if you try to, you end up pleasing no one. And that's just life. That said, it is also not an excuse to just be flat out ignorant and flat out racist. And some of the people, especially in this particular case, in this particular case, those on the, like, the, the uh, far right side in this particular case, will talk about how we're too PC, we're too politically correct. Well, 
I totally agree with that assessment, but it is not a carte blanche excuse to be flat out discriminatory, flat out prejudiced, and flat out racist. Like when Donald Trump, for example, was talking about we are too politically correct, he is right. But what he did as a result, it's kind of like one of these things of, I mean this with all due respect, but you are the biggest piece of shit on the planet. You know, just because you put with all due respect on there doesn't mean you're saying it with any due respect. Doesn't mean there's any respect at all and doesn't mean it's something that should be said or is okay to say. But of course we know some of the things that he said, but others have as well. And, you know, I will also say for the liberal side of the fence, when thinking about the two extremes, uh, there are definitely snowflakey tendencies in terms of especially with Trump. You cannot complain about every single thing. Um, people are way too sensitive about too many things. I would agree with that. And, you know, the whole thing of you kind of have to pick and choose your battle sometimes. Find what's the most important and really hammer that home. And some of the other smaller stuff, what happens is, is if you complain all the time, all it becomes is white noise. None of it stands out. There's no hierarchy of accountability, of discipline, of anything like that. And it's a free-for-all and nothing matters and you know what happens nothing changes you know and it's true so yes the world is too sensitive nowadays um, to a certain degree but in some some ways as well we are incredibly insensitive I speak specifically about this country we're the retards that still have millions of people that don't have access to health insurance don't have access to quality health care we are the idiots with a close to $20 trillion national debt. We are the idiots with the out-of-date and in some places crumbling infrastructure. I mean, we're the idiots that will sit there and say that we think getting rid of all guns is a solution, which is not feasible and not reasonable, or giving more guns to more people is the answer because the only way to stop a bad guy with a gun is a good guy with a gun, which is a completely dumb and idiotic logic. Or to sit there and say that mass shootings are a mental health issue, so our way to solve that is to peel back restrictions on people with mental health issues buying guns, so that way more people with mental health issues can buy more guns, so that way we have more mass shootings, because I guess that's a price of freedom. <sighs> America is a really frustrating place, full of hypocrisies, and double standards and sensitivities on all sides. And that's just the way it is. I don't know what much more to say about that. But anyways, thanks to you guys that submitted your questions. I enjoyed this. I don't know if it was the most fun, but I thought there were some good questions that were asked. So I'll see you later.